Hey, welcome to English 360 podcast. Today we're talking about beaches. Yes, you heard it right. Beaches, not the other ones. The other ones we're not interested in, but the beaches where we go in the summer. And I have the 10 most wonderful beaches in Italy. So you might ask me, where did I get this information from? I'll tell you, it's not off the top of my head, but it's from a very reliable source called The Lonely Planet. Okay, so The Lonely Planet is a very good source of information about different parts of the world you want to go to. Okay, so The Lonely Planet has this article on 10 best beaches. I'm not going to tell you which one is the best and which one is number 10, but I'm just going to tell you the 10 most wonderful places to go if you are a beach goer. If you're listening to this podcast be because you want to learn English, then this is the right place because while you listen to me, you will also practice listening and comprehension. So let's get started. The first beach on the list is the beach called Reina Bianca. Okay. The just like the Caribbean comment come thick and fast when it comes to Spiaggia Rena Bianca, a glorious sweep of pale sand lapped by shallow crystal clear aquamarine water on the northern tip of the island of Sardinia. From the eastern edge, a trail threads along the coastline past granite boulders and formations that fire the imagination with their incredible shapes. So as I'm looking at this beautiful beach, I can tell you that it does look marvelous. However, I can also see rocks. So if you are not big on rocky beaches, this might not be your cup of tea. Okay, so think about that. Uh, let's move on to the next one, which is called Piaggia di Sabaudia. Now, Sabaudia is on the mainland Italy. So it's located in Lazio and it's hugely popular with people from Rome and to a certain degree, Naples. You get people from both big cities coming onto this beach. It tends to get very crowded. Located in Lazio, region of Italy, Sabaudia's fabulous beach stretches for miles. Good for running if you're into it or walking. A wide expanse of fine soft sand flanked by billowing dunes capped by Mediterranean scrub is largely free of invasive development with facilities concentrated at the end of nearest town. The sea is clean and excellent for swimming, though it can get choppy when the wind whips in. You will need your own wheels, a car or a bike to get there. Note that parking can be a headache in peak summer conditions. The beaches can get very crowded. So watch out for that. Next one is Tropia Beach or Tropia Beach, a puzzle of lanes and piazzas on the west coast of Calabria is famed for its dramatic cliff edge site and spectacular sunsets. Good for drone lovers. It sits on the promontorio of Tropia, which stretches from Nicotera in the south to Pizzo in the north. The coast alternates between dramatic cliffs and icing sugar soft sandy beaches, all etched by a translucent sea. The town's picturesque namesake beach sits just under a series of colorful buildings perched atop sheer cliffs. Unsurprisingly, crowds of Italian holiday makers, lots of them, descend here in summer. If you hear English being spoken, it is probably from Americans visiting relatives. Enormous numbers left to forge better lives in America in the earlier 20th century. The next one we're going to is in the small island of Lampedusa. Okay, it's called the Spiaggia di Conigli, the beach of the rabbits. 
few beaches in the world enjoy such legendary status as this long stretch of pristine white sand on the tiny islet of Lampedusa, Italy's southernmost island geographically closer to Tunisia than the Italian mainland, lapped by turquoise waters. The stunning beach has managed to retain its beauty thanks largely to its protected status as the centerpiece of Reserva Naturale Isola di San Petuso. The beach is accessible only by boat or on foot via a 15 minute trail off the main road. Look for the sign of the lounging rabbit. So you can get there by boat or if you're fit enough you can track it. Spiaggia di Conigli is one of the few places in Italy where Caretta loggerhead sea turtles lay their eggs and is strictly off limits at night during peak nesting season, typically between May and August. Watch for signs advising of current restrictions. Let's move on to Falsola Beach. The small pebbly beach is immediately southeast of Rio Maggiore, the easternmost village of Cinque Terre in the northern Liguria region of Italy. Take the short trail that leads past the harbour to get there. The shore is rugged. Mm. That means you might not like it if you like sandy beaches and delightfully secluded from the village, though it gets packed here in summer. Swimmers should be wary of currents here. Then we have Cala Golorice. On the eastern coast of Sardinia, Cala Golorice rivals the world's best beaches. At the southern end, bizarre limestone formations soar away from the cliffside. Among them is a jaw-dropping Monte Carodi, also known as the Ag I can I can't pronounce that Agul Aguglia Agulia a 480 feet or 148 meter needle of rock beloved of climbers. Many boat trips will take you here or if you can hike in from the Alto Piano del Golgo on the beautiful 2.2 mile or 3.5 kilometer Calagorice Trail. Note that the beach itself is rather small and can get crowded in the summer. Boats cannot land as its protected park. It looks absolutely marvelous, but it's very difficult to get to, so you might want to think twice about that. Then we have Spiaggia di Sansone, around three miles or five kilometers west of Portoferraio on the tiny Tuscan island of Elba. Samson's Beach is a picturesque postcard, swathe of tiny white pebbles and shingle ensnared by cliffs with crystal clear turquoise waters, much loved by snorkeling enthusiasts. Beach lovers reckon this to be one of lovely Alba's best beaches. A steep footpath links it with Spiaggia di Sorgente, parked by the roadside or, assuming you rose with the larks, in the tiny car park. So out of all the beaches that I've seen, this one is probably the one I would be least likely to go to. Puerto Beach, an easy bus ride from the center of town, Cagliari's fabulous Puerto Beach extends 4.3 miles or 7 kilometers beyond the green promontorio di Sant'Elia, nicknamed the Cella del Diablo, the Devil's Saddle. In summer, much of the city's youth decamps here to sunbathe and party in the restaurants and bars that line the sand. Water sports are big and you can hire canoes at the beach clubs. To get to the beach, take bus PF or PQ from Piazza Matteotti. Let's move on to the next one which is Spiaggia di Cefalu. The Cefalu crescent shaped beach is one of the most popular in all of Sicily. In summer, it's packed to be sure to arrive early to get a good spot. Though some sections require a ticket, the area closest to the old town is public and you can hire a beach umbrella and deck chair. It looks good, but I'm not sure it's worth the pain because it's very small and it's bound to get very packed when you're there. So not sure about that. Baia di Leranto or Iranto a spectacular beach at the tip of Punta Penna Peninsula, south of Sorrento. Iranto is, or Liranto, I'm not sure which way it's pronounced, I think it's Iranto, 
Iranto is reached via a walking path that starts in the village of Nirano. The walk takes about 45 minutes one way and there are several steep downhill sections to negotiate. Wear good shoes. The pebbly beach is sheltered by headlands and perfect for swimming but can get crowded in the summer. So there you have it. These are the best 10 beaches in Italy. If you're in Italy, then you know which ones to go to. If you're coming to Italy, do check these beaches out. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. See you in the next one. Peace.